Well, the United Nations is working on development since uh, almost 70 years. We'll celebrate the 70th anniversary next year. And this uh, European Year of Development is a fantastic opportunity for us within the UN in Brussels and in Europe to team up with our EU partners and together to reach out to the European citizens. We wish to do it in a creative way. We, we wish to actually touch them and to uh, make sure that they understand better the global thematic of development, why development matters. So it's a, it's a challenging work because it's not easy at this time of crisis to explain the importance of development. But I think it's an opportunity to together leverage all our tools, all our networks, and our common vision, our shared values, to actually go and explain to the citizens and the European citizens, wherever they are, why we need them to contribute and to understand uh, what the European Year for Development is all about. The core focus is storytelling. If you want to reach an audience of citizens, you've got to convey your messages with human stories. So you can see that this is all about people and that is what you can achieve with uh, storytelling. For the World Food Programme, we have um, a photo exhibition entitled The Family Meal, What Brings Us Together, that we're putting on show in different European capitals throughout the year. That exhibition, it, uh, it features family meals from five countries on three continents where we work, where we help families with the assistance from the European Union. But I think that question, what brings us together, it's one that's relevant worldwide, not only in Europe, but also in the context of the European Year of Development. And everybody has their own answer to it. And whatever that answer is, it's a, I, I believe it's a step towards the, the objectives of the European Year of Development. I think our objective is to uh, be coherent, to be coordinated, to deliver as one for the UN, but also for the EU. We'll streamline many of our activities and work much more closer uh, with the 26 UN agencies based in Brussels and also with our EU co counterparts both in Brussels and in the various countries in Europe and beyond because this year is for the European citizens, it concerns everyone and if we work all together we'll get a bigger impact and uh, leverage all the potential. A lot of the activities we're doing anyway are, are sort of thrown more sharply into focus um, by the European Year on Development. Concord itself, we're looking at a new um, strategy for next year, so we come to the end of our seven-year strategy and we're looking forward. Um, and I think one of the things that we talk about in our new strategy is what other areas of EU policy have an impact uh, on the people that we want to be in solidarity with. And I think the European Year on Development provides us an opportunity to make some of those connections uh, with, all, with civil society organisations working in, for example, agriculture, fisheries, uh, migration issues. A successful year is uh, raising awareness uh, of uh, European citizens for uh, issues related to development. Simply, are there more people aware and is there more support? How successful have we been in getting people involved in the discussion on the SDGs and the climate change talks? Uh, these are big diplomatic intergovernmental UN negotiations. Um, but they won't work if uh, the general public doesn't feel at all involved in them. I think uh, one of the success would be to learn to work closer together EU-UN uh, communicators and uh, maybe to make those acronyms like Millennium Development Goals, Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, NDGs, all much more accessible and meaningful to the citizens. The bottom line is there's 805 million people who are hungry and there's enough food in the world today to feed everybody. Hunger is a completely solvable problem and if the awareness of that fact can be increased by the European Year of Development, then from the point of view of the World Food Programme, it'll be a success. And I think the final thing would be um, the alliances and relationships we build 
It's one year, but halfway through 2016 into 2017, are we still working uh, with the new um, allies? Are we still building on those relationships we maybe cemented or, or even formed in, in 2015? So I think that will be another, another benchmark to see whether we've succeeded.